Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to start adding some characters to our screens in our scene. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names as always will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. If you're interested in supporting the channel, if you want to see more of this type of content, then please feel free to either become a member of the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button or visiting the Patreon listed in the description down below. So let's jump right into this. Then. As you can see, I've got my scene loaded and those of you who've been watching my other videos will recognize this scene as one that I built from scratch during a live stream. And I've loaded a dressed character into the scene and this character is going to be the one with whom we can interact. So before we do anything else, I'm going to jump out of the camera mode. And that's mainly so that I don't disturb that camera because it's vitally important that that camera stays exactly where it is. Otherwise, when I render this character, she's not going to appear in the correct location. Now, other factors that we have to take into consideration are she's going to cast shadows if we put her too close to light sources and this is a very shiny floor so she should generate reflections however for the purposes of this exercise we're going to pretend that that's not the case and we're going to get her sitting on the couch in a way that's a good thing because it means that she's less likely to cast a reflection or a shadow on the floor however if you want your game to be ultra realistic you're going to have to bear these things in mind when it comes to pushing out the render of the character so what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a sitting pose to this character during my uh, content library. So we just go to uh, poses by function sitting and let's see what we can find here. Find something that's nice and simple, making sure you've got your character selected, of course, otherwise you're not going to get anything at all. And we don't need it to be a hugely convincing sitting poses in because the camera's so far away as long as she kind of looks like she's roughly sitting on the sofa that's fine so we'll just find something that works and then we'll just go with that so bear with me for just a moment i'm only slightly stalling she's not going to be sitting with her feet up that would be silly so we just need a good pose for a couch where she's sitting down with her feet on the floor let's try yeah She's not going to be in a weird pose. She's not grieving. She's not doing any massive gesticulation. She's just sitting. So all we need is something like this pose will probably work. We can make some tweaks to it as necessary. This exercise really is more about demonstrating how you can get a really solid cutout, how you can get a really solid looking um, avatar that you can put into your game so here we go as you can see she's sitting the, the sitting pose that she's in is very low down so we're going to have to tweak that slightly so we'll just drag her up and slide her over to the couch i think i'm tempted to take her shoes off but we'll come to that in a moment so we're here we're sitting there and it's a tricky pose i'll be honest because of the position of her hands so actually i don't think this one's going to work not the end of the world though we do have other options we just need something that is going to capture the mood um, and she's basically just going to be another click of blaster in our screen that we can get sitting down so that looks a little bit more convincing just make sure we don't accidentally deselect her when we drag her down again we slide over here and we can adjust the z translation this way as well if we so wish and Make sure that we plant her bum into that sofa quite nicely. And then as you can see, the heels are kind of doing some weird stuff. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to that as well. So let's just close in nicely on that left foot. And we're just going to unbend that so that the toes touch the floor, even if it's only slightly. And then we can see the heels still kind of digging in, but the angle of the camera is probably not going to pick that up too much so i think we're in a good position so if we now come back to our camera we can have a look and we can jump into our nvidia ira preview mode if we want to just to see how this is all going to look it's going to have a bit of a think for a moment and then we should just get a rough estimate and this is where you're going to see those shadows and those reflections which 
normally we would have to take into consideration when placing our model. So you can see that there's a bit of a reflection. Shadow isn't too much of a problem, but the reflection is there. So it's going to look a bit weird having her in the scene without a reflection. Um, so in this situation, I perhaps wouldn't use canvases. I would actually render the whole image and then cut her out so that I could include the reflection. However, for the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to go straight to our render settings and we're going to set up. So here we are, we're in our render settings and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced and where it says canvases, we're going to click on the canvases tab there and we're going to create our canvas. What we need to do now is add plus. So we've got a beauty canvas, which is precisely what we're after. And we need to click on alpha. Next thing we need to do is create a new node list and we can just call this uh, mom because that's who the node list is going to be for. So we can now select mom there. And now what we need to do is actually edit this list so that we've got the right things in it. And this is just a little quicker way of doing it than it is by selecting the items in the scene. So now we have all of the items in the scene. What we need to do is expand the mom node, click on that, and then click on everything else that's in it. We've got the eyebrows, the eyelashes, the hair, the shoes, the skirt, and the turtleneck. There we go. So now we've created our canvas. All of the items that we want are within our node list, which we've now chosen here in our render. So now all we have to do is come back to our editor for a moment, and we're gonna change the size to 1920 by 1080. Make sure that's correct. Make sure that we're in still, and then we can come back to our canvas, and all we're gonna do is hit render. And then after a few seconds, Dash Studio is gonna have a little bit of a think. And then as you can see, now that it's started rendering, the only things that are in the scene are the actual character themselves. Now I've obviously need to make some changes to my number of iterations and everything because I'm still set up for an animation. But essentially this is what we're going to get. So if I close this down, I can come into my editor. In my progressive rendering, I can change the number of samples, which is currently there. And we're just going to increase that. We can make sure that all of our settings are spot on and then we can push out a render and that will give us the results that we're after. So once we've got the result that we're looking for, what we need to do is save our image, remembering to save it as PNG. Now you can faff around changing the name of this afterwards, but we might as well bring up our code and look after what we are wanting to be our naming convention. So we want it to be the name and the either the string of the chapter and the location or the name and the location and so on. Now this is going to be the default sort of uh, avatar that appears when I have the character in the location. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re resort to this absolute first one here, name, chapter, location. So we know that her name is mom, we know that we're in chapter one, and we know that the location is called waiting room. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this mom with lowercase underscore chapter is going to be one and then location is going to be waiting underscore room and then we're going to save that as a png what we can do is we can now code this in once we've stored our image in the correct folder so that when we are in this location with mom she appears but we have to do a couple of things first and the first of those things is we actually need to create a character for our mom so what we need to do is Control c in our variable defines file. We're gonna copy this one, we've already created one, and we're gonna create another one. This one, she's gonna be called Mom, and we're gonna give her a nice name as well. And we know that she is gonna be in waiting underscore room with us. We've got to remember to save that. So when we test our code, what you can see is now that we have the avatar sitting on the couch, and when we hover over it, it just gives us that tool tip of her name. And if we click on it at the moment, it doesn't do anything. So what we need to do is we need to create a default action for when we click on our character and we can do that in our RemPy code. So what we need to do is come to characters.rpy. We can see that we've got our characters got speech with a capital M. So we can go to clicky repeats and we can actually add some defaults into there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add clicky repeats into a new file. And we're just going to call this one character. We can spell character underscore defaults dot rpy. So this is where we're going to put our actions for what happens when we click on a character. 
The first thing we need to do is go into our script and look for what the label is going to be called. If we click on a character, what we're seeing is UI return string sequence or underscore blank. So what we need to do is we need to create a label called mum underscore blank in our file. So we can come into here. We're going to just type label mum underscore blank. And then we can add return there. And then we can put in here whatever we want. So if we were to go to our waiting room, clicky repeats, we can just copy and paste this bit so that we get our notification equals true statement correct. So we're just gonna swing that in there and then we can say, have our character or the mum character even saying something like, hey, sweetheart. And then we can just have a capital M there. So now when we rerun our code, we just need to cancel this one down and we've reopened it. So when we click on it now, it comes up with, as you can see, we've got our nice side image, which we created in our previous episodes. And we've got some text that she's saying to us when we've clicked on her. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to do that. We can come back into our Dash Studio. We can come out of that camera there and we can just swing the camera around so that we're in a good position. Create a new camera where we are. Just gonna click on that and jump into that camera view. And then we can swing ourselves around so that we're actually roughly in her eye line, like so. Give ourselves as much space as we can and then zoom in. So we're getting a good shot of her. That kind of angle works there. That's what Bob Ross would call a happy accident. We're gonna turn on depth of field and then we're gonna bring our focal distance back so that it's on her eyes. And we're gonna just expand that there like that. And there we go, happy with that. So we can come back into there now. We can click on her eyes so that we can make sure that she's actually looking after use the move tool. Click on that. Now we've got left eye selected. We can say that she's gonna look at camera two with that eye. And we can do the same thing with the right eye there. Look at camera two there, except her eyes don't really move very much, but now she's looking at the camera. We can just leave it as a neutral expression for now and then we can render this out. And in order to do that, all we have to do is back in our render settings in the advanced tab under the canvases tab, we're just gonna turn off that canvas like that. And now when we hit our render button, it will render the whole scene again. Okie dokie, so I've rendered out this image. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad. A little bit of grain there, but for the purpose of this exercise, it's absolutely fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna give my image a name. I'm gonna remember to switch it over to JPEG. Now, a lot of people do ask me about my naming conventions when it comes to games. So what I tend to do is num name the image, the label name, followed by a sequence number. So in this case, we're doing mum blank. And because this is gonna be the only image we use, I'm just gonna call it mum blank underscore zero one. And then I'm gonna hit save. So now we're ready to go into our code and make some changes there. So what we're gonna do is jump in here. And when we've got this notification equals true, what I'm actually gonna do is delete that now. And I'm gonna say scene, making sure that it's got a cap uh, and not a capital E scene. And then we're gonna say mum underscore blank underscore zero one with dissolve like so. And then I'm gonna end the scene with scene black with dissolve. And then that will mean that the image will fade in. We'll see the text there. And then when we click, it will fade back out, back to our scene. So we can test that now. So here we are back in our game. And as you can see, everything's working hunky-dory. So this time when we click on the mum image, we get a fade in, we get this image that says, hey, sweetheart. And then when we click again, it fades back out. And because this is the default, we aren't including any kind of next statement or anything like this. So basically anytime we do not have a click on the mum defined in perhaps one of these. So let's say for example, we wanted our one zero to do something else. We could just copy this. So we've got this here, gonna copy that, gonna come into here and then we can say mum but instead of blank this time we're going to say one underscore zero and then we can change what this says to do something else now in this case it won't do anything because we have an auto event in fact it will because you have to click on the door now to move on to the next part of the scene so we can just do this and we can change this now we can say uh, this is let's say uh, 
this is sequence dependent chat save that again and now if we run our code again because we are in chapter one underscore zero one sequence zero if we click on this now you'll say hey sweetheart and then we click on it again and we'll keep doing that because if we go to shift O, we can go to print uh, sequence and it says we're in sequence one so we've actually skipped over this here and that's not a problem because what we can do is we need to create a new file here so we're going to create a new file there and this one's going to be one underscore one dot rpy and we're going to hit enter and what we can do is we can actually copy this control x and we can just paste it in here and we'll change it to one underscore one we can see that we click on it and we say hi sweetheart this is sequence dependent chat and that is because we're in sequence one underscore one now if i were to go shift o and i were to go sequence equals two we've now changed the sequence number and because we don't have a one underscore two event for clicking on the character it just goes to the default uh, text so we get there hey sweetheart and that's basically all there is to it on the creating images for this and we can have different ones so if we had a image for a specific part of the sequence we could call that one underscore two for example and she would appear elsewhere in the screen hope you found that useful guys let me know what you think in the comments below as always stay in touch and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye